Hello everyone, welcome to Yellow Pages Nursing. In today's video, we will be discussing about airborne transmission and precautions. Before entering into the session, if you have not subscribed our channel, please subscribe our channel and do not forget to hit the bell icon to receive instant notifications. Let's get into the topic. What do we mean by airborne? Airborne refers to something that is carried or transmitted through the air, which means we can catch some diseases simply by breathing. Now, what is airborne transmission? Airborne transmission is a mode of disease transmission in which infectious agents such as bacteria or viruses are spread through small respiratory droplets that remain suspended in the air and can be inhaled by others. Here comes size of airborne particles. Respiratory droplets are of various sizes as shown in the picture. Factors that contribute to the generation of airborne particles are smaller droplets called droplet nuclei or aerosols which are less than 5 micrometers or micron in diameter can remain suspended in the air for longer periods and can be inhaled by others. Aerosols are even smaller and can travel over longer distances and reach deeper into the respiratory system when inhaled. Larger droplets, which are greater than 5 micrometers or micron in diameter, tend to quickly fall to the ground or surfaces within a short distance from the person. Now, let's discuss factors which contribute to the generation of airborne particles one by one. First comes respiratory activities. When an infected person coughs, sneezes, talks, sings, or breathes heavily, they release respiratory droplets of various sizes into the air. As discussed before, larger droplets quickly fall to the ground or surfaces, but smaller droplets can remain suspended in the air for longer periods. These smaller droplets, known as droplet nuclei or aerosols, can contain infectious agents and be inhaled by individuals in close proximity. The next factor is environmental factors. Environmental factors play a major role in the generation of airborne particles. Poor ventilation, stagnant air, or crowded indoor spaces can lead to the accumulation of infectious particles and increase the risk of airborne transmission. The next factor is aerosol generating procedures. For example, intubation, bronchoscopy, nebulizer treatments, or high-flow oxygen therapy. These procedures can produce a significant amount of aerosols, increasing the risk of airborne transmission to healthcare workers. Now, let's discuss about infectious diseases that are transmitted through airborne routes. They include tuberculosis, measles, chickenpox, influenza, Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome Next, let's discuss some precautions which can prevent airborne transmissions. The first and the foremost thing is hand hygiene. Practice through hand hygiene before and after every patient contact using soap and water or an alcohol-based hand sanitizer. Next is personal protective equipment that is PPE. This may include wearing a properly fitted N95 respirator or powered air purifying respirator. With a particulate respirator, perform a fit check before entering an area, along with gloves, gowns, and eye protection when caring for patients on airborne precautions. Gloves are used to protect hands from potential contamination. Gowns or protective clothing is to cover the body and prevent direct contact with infectious materials. Eye protection such as goggles or face shields to shield the eyes from respiratory droplets. The next main thing to prevent transmission is isolation rooms. Patients with diseases requiring airborne precautions should be placed in negative pressure ventilation room that help contain airborne particles. The negative pressure ventilation room helps to prevent the escape of airborne particles. 
The air inside the room is continuously filtered and exhausted to the outside, reducing the risk of transmission to others. Remember, these rooms should always be closed. The next important point is patient education. Educate patients about respiratory hygiene, including proper coughing and sneezing etiquette. Encourage them to cover their mouth and nose with the tissue or their elbow when coughing or sneezing and to dispose of the tissues properly. The next main thing is to limit the transportation of patients from the room only for essential purposes. If transport is necessary, minimize patient dispersal of droplet nuclei by placing a surgical or procedural mask on the patient. Next is minimizing aerosol generating procedures whenever possible. If such procedures are necessary, follow appropriate infection control protocols to reduce the risk of transmission. The next important thing is proper disposal of infectious waste. Strict protocols for the disposal of infectious waste should be followed to prevent contamination and potential spread of airborne pathogens. It is important to note that the specific measures for airborne precautions can vary depending on the infectious diseases. Therefore, you can refer latest guidelines and recommendations from Center for Disease Control and Prevention or your own institutional policies. Here comes few multiple choice questions for your practice. You can answer the questions in the comment box. First, which of the following personal protective equipment is recommended for healthcare workers in contact with airborne diseases? Options are A. Surgical masks B. Face shields C. N95 respirators and D. Safety goggles Next question is Negative pressure ventilation rooms are designed to Options are A. Prevent the entry of external pathogens B. Isolate infected patients and prevent spread of airborne particles C. Improve air circulation in the room D. Maintain a comfortable temperature Next question is Which of the following is an example of a respiratory hygiene measure to prevent airborne transmission? Options are a. Washing hands with soap and water B. Wearing gloves and gowns C. Using alcohol-based hand sanitizers D. Covering mouth and nose while coughing or sneezing Next question is Airborne transmission refers to the spread of infectious agents through Options are A. Direct physical contact B. Respiratory droplets C. Small particles or droplet nuclei in the air D. Contaminator surfaces You can mention the answers and your comments in the comment box. So here you go with airborne transmission and precautions. If you find this video useful, please like it, share it and subscribe it. And do not forget to hit the bell icon to receive instant notifications. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day.